All right, here's another example of bouncing a chemical equation. Uh, this one's given us the um, chemical equation or the reaction um, I'm talking about it. So the first things we're going to have to do is write out the skeletal equation. All right, so we're going to bounce the chemical equation for the combustion of butane, which is an uh, organic hydrocarbon, so that's C4H10, and uh, that would be in the gas phase. Um, it's a gas at room temperature which reacts with oxygen. Now the one thing that we're going to have to remember for this example, when it reacts with oxygen, we know that oxygen is one of the seven naturally occurring uh, diatomic elements, so we have to write that as O2. Oxygen always exists as O2, not just oxygen atom. If we don't start out with that O2, uh, we're never going to get this uh, equation properly balanced. Okay, to form, so that means we're ta done talking about the reactants, now we're going to start talking about the products. And the products are carbon dioxide, which is also a gas at room temperature, and gaseous water. Water is usually a liquid at room temperature, but of course in a combustion reaction it's going gonna, it's gonna to be in the gas phase uh, initially. Alright, so now we've got our skeletal equation, or our unbalanced equation. And so let's set up our table and start balancing this uh, chemical equation. All right, so we don't have any polyatomic ions. So we're not going to bounce those. Um, we do have an element all by itself, this oxygen. And so we're going to leave that until the end. Um, that way, if we need to mess with the coefficients of oxygen, we're only uh, you know, messing with oxygen. We're not uh, altering the number of any other atoms. All right, so let's start with carbon. On the left side, I've got four carbons. On the right side, I've only got one. And so that's not balanced. I'm going to... I'm gonna, uh, Correct that by multiplying this carbon on the product side by 4. I'm going to put the coefficient of 4 in front of CO2. All right. Um, now, next up is hydrogen. We've got 10 hydrogens on the left side. And I've only got 2 on the right side. So 2 in water. And so I need to correct that by multiplying that by 5. And so now we've got a coefficient of 5 in front of water. All right. And last uh, is the oxygen, all right, and it's uh, O2, so I've got two oxygens on the left side. How many oxygens do I have on the right side? Well, I've got oxygen in two different products, I've got it in water and ox or, excuse me, carbon dioxide, and so I do need to uh, add up those up. So I've got four carbon dioxides, uh, there's two oxygens in each carbon dioxide, so that's a total of eight. And then I've got five waters, one oxygen in each water, so that's five, and so that's going to equal 13. So I've got 13 oxygens on the product side. So of course I need to bounce this. I've got two oxygens on the left side, 13 oxygens on the right. Um, and so how am I going to do that? Well, of course I'm going to have to find a, I could find a least common denominator between them. Um, and try to figure out how I'm going to you know, spread that around to two different molecules. Uh, but I think a, an easier way to do this is to use a fractional coefficient and then get rid of it later. And so what I can do is I can multiply the, the two oxygens by a fraction to equal 13. And the fraction is always there. I've always got the numbers. I'm just going to build the fraction with the bigger number over the smaller number. So I can multiply two oxygen by 13 halves, and 13 halves times 2 is 13. And so that is what balances my uh, chemical equation. Now technically that is a balanced chemical equation. You will see chemical equations with fractions, fractional coefficients, as they're called. Uh, but in general chemistry, we like to, to get them to whole number ratios because eventually we'll start using the coefficients for stoichiometry, and it's just a lot easier to work with whole numbers uh, in stoichiometry. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to get rid of that coefficient by multiplying through by the denominator. So I'm going to take this whole thing, this whole equation, and multiply it by 2. And when I do that, I'll get rid of that fraction and then, of course, balance my uh, equation in all in one step. Okay, so I'm going to multiply 2 so by 1, so that's going to give me 2 butanes. plus 2 times 13 halves is 13 oxygens.
And that produces two times four is eight carbon dioxides. Um, and two times five is 10 water. And of course, I'm going to still want to go through and make sure that this is balanced. And so 2 times 4, I've got 8 carbons. So 8 times 1 is 8, so I've got 8 carbons. 2 times 10 is 20. 10 times 2 is 20. I've got 20 hydrogens on both sides. I've got 13 times 2, that's 26 oxygens. How many do I have over here? 8 times 2, that's 16, plus an additional 10. So I've got 26 oxygens on both sides. And so this equation is balanced. Alright, so just a little qu quick recap. If I've got an even odd situation where um, it might not be the easiest thing to come up with a um, fractor least common denominator, I can build a coefficient by taking the bigger number, putting it over the smaller number, multiplying by that by the uh, smaller value to balance it, and then I can get rid of the coefficient, or rather the fractional coefficient, by multiplying through by the denominator.